our staff. On behalf of our, our staff, our students, our parents, our board of management and members of our school community, I'm delighted to welcome you to our Gamar, to Gamar Community College and to our open evening. Uh, my name is Ronan McCarthy and I'm very fortunate to be the principal of uh, such a, a fine school. We would like to extend uh, a warm welcome to everyone who has joined us this evening and we are very grateful that you have taken the time um, and made the effort to be with us on what is one of the most important nights of, our, of the year for our school community. While we would obviously have much preferred to have met you in, in person, we are still delighted to have this opportunity to share with you the story of our school and to highlight some of the uh, qualities and characteristics that make GCC uh, a unique um, learning centre of learning. Um, and as you make the decision about what school you are going to pick for your son or daughter, we want to provide you with some information um, about our school, its strengths, and to demonstrate, I suppose we want to demonstrate to you that the message we're giving you this evening is a, an authentic and lived reality in, in the school. We are delighted to be joined by parents who have already entrusted the school with looking after their children, the parents who have already sent siblings to us uh, no, are, are in the past, and there is no greater vote of confidence in the school than parents who continually send us their children um, year after year, and we're very grateful for that trust. But we're also aware that we have a mixture of, of, of parents on, on the call tonight, and um, you know, we also have first-time parents logging in, and um, parents whose, who's, you know, their eldest child and possibly their first time uh, sending a child to secondary school. So we will try and, I suppose, pitch the information, um, you know, to ensure that we're meeting, I suppose, the needs of, of, of all our parents and all our students who are on the call on the call this evening. But we're delighted. Uh, we're delighted to see so many people with us this evening who are interested in our school and, and learning some more about GCC. Before we start, just, uh, I suppose, a few housekeeping issues. Um, first of all, you will see on the website this evening that um, we are going to mute everyone who is on the call and we'll also have um, everybody's cameras off. Um, so that will be done here by, by the administrator uh, of, the, of the call. Uh, so we'll mute everyone and cameras will be off. I also just want to point out that the presentation is being recorded um, and the reason for that is we want to be able to put the recording up on the website for parents and for students who are not able to access it live, live this evening. And, and finally, I suppose before we start, just to say that you know, our, our presentation this evening will be approximately 30 minutes. Um, so we, we hope you know, to, to, um, to be finished somewhere in around 8 o'clock. So, I suppose I'm going to start by just giving you some background to, to the school. Uh, GCC is a Cork Education and Training Board school. It's a Cork ETB school. We have an enrollment of over 1,130 students. Um, and the Diocese of Cork and Ross is one of our trustee patrons. The school opened in 1997, so it's 25 years old uh, next year. And you know, there have been, I suppose, many, many memorable milestones in the history of the school uh, since it opened. But this evening, we're just going to mention some of the more recent ones. So in 2017, we had the official opening of our, our new extension. Um, in 2018, we had our link with the International Space Station. In 2019, we had the launch of our school strategic plan. And most recently, uh, this month, uh, sorry, last month in September, we had the opening of our new school pitch development. So GCC is a, is a thriving school. Um, the school is at maximum enrollment and the school has just achieved our, our best ever set of results in the, in the leading certificate. And 
I suppose while we always like to acknowledge, and, and we're no different to any other school, that we'd like to acknowledge the tremendous results of our students who, who achieved in excess of 600 points in the Leaving Cert, I suppose we are especially proud um, that we, we know through our tracking and monitoring data system in the school, which I'll speak more about um, in a few minutes, we know that the majority of our students um, in sixth year performed above expectation relative to cognitive ability. And we'll explain in a while how, how we know that and, and how we can make such a statement. In relation to our results, you know, at the upper end, we had over 25% of students achieving in excess of 500 points, 10% of the entire year group in excess of 550 points. And I suppose what this did is it gives students access to the vast majority of top end academic courses at, at third level and um, in whatever direction that students decide to go. In the mid range level of 400 to 500 points, again, we had significant um, gained in the number of students achieving that bracket. And we are also exceptionally proud of our leading sort of applied students, where more than half of the group received the highest mark of distinction awarded in the LCA program. So our school is, is, is a successful school, we believe, and it's successful because all everybody who is invested in our school and our students work together to impact positively on the learning experience of our, of, our, of our students. And that involves the students themselves, our staff, our parents, our board of management, our primary schools, um, our community groups, all working together to ensure our students experience quality teaching and learning in a high quality learning environment, which leads to successful outcomes in state exams. But our school is also successful because we are always looking to do better. And I suppose the key takeaway from, from our meeting this evening is that, that, that the nature of the school is we're always seeing how we can improve the service that we deliver to our students and to our parents in the school. We're an ambitious school with high expectations of our students. And I suppose we continually challenge our, our students to improve themselves in all aspects of their lives. So this evening, what we want to do is we want to share with you just, I suppose, some examples of what this ambition looks like. And when I, you know, and we say to you that we want to do things better, we're just going to give you some examples um, of, of in, in the recent, you know, in, in the last number of weeks, for example, of, of what that looks like on the ground. So I'm going to share my screen with you. And just bear with me for one moment. Okay, so I'm hoping I'm hoping there that you are able to see my screen. Um, everything okay there, Mr. Gray? Yeah. yeah, perfect. Thank you. So basically, we in the school over the last number of years have developed a system of profiling of our students, and what that means is that we use standardized assessment scores such as STEM scores, um, which we get uh, STEM scores from the primary school, CAT assessments, in-school assessments such as Christmas exams, uh, Easter assessments, and, and results from state exams. And what that does is it ensures that we have a, a complete data profile of each child in the school and it allows us to, or enables us to understand with relative certainty um, whether a child is performing above ability, um, at two ability or below ability. And we just want to share with you this evening an example of what that looks like um, on the ground here in school. And I suppose the work that goes into gathering this data that we can share so that we, we do have a profile of our, of our students. So I'm hoping there that you can see um, uh, an Excel spreadsheet, and this is a third year year group. Now, obviously, we have um, omitted the names of, of the students, but we have you know 200 students roughly in 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 third year year group. And what we'd like you to look at is you can see across the top the various subjects that the students are doing. Okay, but I'm going to bring. I, I think I hope you can see my cursor. I'm going to bring you over to the right hand side, and 
you'll see there in the second last column, you'll see a heading there, CAT index. And basically, what that CAT index is, is, is a figure which indicates whether a student is performing above ability, to ability, or below ability. Now, any student who is getting a CAT index of be somewhere between four and 4.5 is performing to ability. If a student is under four, um, 4.0, if a student is under that, then the indications are that the student is performing under ability. Any student who's getting a score in excess of 4.5 is basically performing um, ahead of their what we would expect from their cognitive profile. So if you look over at that column there, you'll see that the student there, 7.86, right down as far as 6.70, these are students who are performing way above, way above what would be reasonably expected of students with their cognitive profile. Now, I'm just going to scroll down through the, um, through the Excel sheet and you might just keep an eye on that column on the right. And what you can see there is all these students have scores well in excess of 4.5. And um, four to 4.5 would indicate that they are performing to ability. And anything in excess of that then is obviously a good news story. If it's under four, then we you know, have concerns. So what you can see there is the number of students in the school in third year who are performing above ability based on, on their cognitive profile. So that information we gather from the various tests that the students do, their, uh, as I said, their um, CAT assessments that they do when they come into first year, their STEM scores. And then that information is shared with um, the year head, the class teacher, and um, with the subject teachers. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to identify students, obviously who are performing above, uh, above ability, but also it's you know, a warning sign for us if a student is, is performing under uh, or is underperforming. And then what we do is we explore with the student and parents, what are the reasons behind, behind that? So that is going on in the school now as we speak, and I suppose has been developed over the last number of years, and with our current six year or our six years we left in 2021, that's the first group that we have, have a full profile of. And this is just an example of how it works in the ground. The next item I want to show you is a, um, or mention, is a PDST forward showcase. So PDST is a professional development service for teachers. And last Thursday, the 7th of October, uh, the school made a presentation at the forward showcase event. And that project was looking at our collective understanding of the factors that help to create an effective feedback culture uh, in the school. So we were looking at uh, students in class and asking questions about, you know, what is it, what type of feedback do they receive and what feedback um, is, is, supports their learning best and has the best impact on, on, on their learning outcomes. So the project was focused on gathering students' opinions um, and basically to better inform our teaching and learning structures. And um, that presentation was, was last Thursday. The follow-on from that, the follow-on from that was today where we had a staff meeting. And at our staff meeting, we asked our teachers basically to work together to identify, uh, I suppose, quality feedback in our reports on VSware. And they spent their afternoon, their subject departments, working together, looking at how best to impact on, on student, on the feedback the students are receiving. So I'm just going to give you a quick look. I, I hope you can see that there. And this is the, um, this is the uh, I suppose, information that was shared with our, with our staff today. And we asked staff to look at effective feedback um, you know, and questions, asking questions uh, about you know the information that the student needs, which is where am I going, how am I going to get there, and what to do next, and that the, the feedback that our teachers give would would answer those questions um, when when students are receiving feedback from from the reports. So that that work was was done today inside in the school and as a follow on from our our forward presentation. 
The next item I'm going to mention is our um, school therapist. So uh, basically in response to the rising rates of emotional distress that, that um, some of our children and young people have been experience, experiencing, the school has introduced uh, a counselling service um, and this started on the 1st of October. And basically it is uh, it is a service that builds on uh, the excellent pastoral support that we provide in the school. Um, and it's, to, it's a professional counselling service uh, funded through the school to support kids with, you know, who have emotional difficulties such as, you know, anxiety or, you know, family related difficulties, etc. Um, and basically the referral pathway for students to avail of this service is through the school's pastoral care team. And you know, when your child starts in, in this school, there are uh, different layers of support that they're for, they're for the child, starting with their subject teacher, their class teacher, uh, their year head, the senior management team in the school. We have a school chaplain. We have, you know, learning support coordinator for each year group. We have our guidance counselors. We have our metal team, who I'll mention later on. Um, and now we have, for example, our school therapist who is available to students who have that level of need. So what you're seeing is, you know, a high level of support for, for students. And you're also seeing the, you know, the school, again, trying to do better um, in, in everything we do and every aspect of the care that we provide to our kids. And then I'm going to mention very quickly our pitch development, which is and Sorry, there was just some feedback there. I just don't have to your mic on there, please. Okay, thank you. So, so I'm also going to mention our, our, our new pitch development. Um, and again, that our pitch development, which has been, I suppose, two to three years in, in the planning, was, was, you know, this project was undertaken in an effort to address, I suppose, shortcomings in our school facilities. On any given day, we could have up to seven PE classes taking place at the same time. And I suppose the school was dependent on using the facilities of um, our, our, our clubs in, in the community. And we were very grateful for, for their support. But now we're able to provide our own, our own, um, our own facilities to, to our students. And I suppose the other element of the school pitch development was it also provided more recreation space for students at break times. Um, which again had been, you know, students that had had requested, and you know, through feedback in our parents' council, um, had been asked for, and which the school provided. So they're just some examples of how the school, um, how the school is, you know, trying to do better, um, all the time in the service and support that we provide to students here in the school, um, on an annual basis. So. The next part of the presentation is just to take you through, and I'm, I, I'm not going to um, spend too long on this, but I'm just going to mention the virtual tour. So you see there with my screen, um, you can see there the this is the main homepage of the website. And obviously a lot of you have logged in through the link to the meeting um, this evening. But I just want to just very briefly take you down to the virtual tour and just to point out and um, one or two uh, pieces of information about it. Um, so I'll just let that load for a second. So we made an addition um, to the virtual tour this year, to make it easier for, for parents and pupils to navigate. So you have the option, as you do with any virtual tour, of, of traveling around the school and going down the corridors and going into various classrooms. But this year, we basically have um, set it up in such a way that you can, if you see at the bottom, I'll just do that again, sorry, on the bottom left, just bear with me for a second. So if you look at the bottom left of the screen and you look at the little hat that I'm clicking on there, that will bring up a whole list of rooms for you and areas in the school that you can actually go into directly. So I'm going to just, by means of an example, I'm just going to click here on the social area in our B block and you're taken into it. So I just want to show you um, two, you can see there are three little icons. 
that and if you click on an icon on any icon in a room it will bring up some information so this one here that i'm clicking on is information about our school uniform so just let that load okay and that will play there for a second so a first year student our chance to do a uniform check before the year head comes along she okay that's on our school uniform over here you have a presentation on the metal team okay uh, which I mentioned uh, provides support to our first year students when they start in the school in September. And the third one there is, is a, a principal's address. Okay. So, again, if you wish, for example, you can go to the AstroTurf pitch. Okay. And again, there, if you click on the icon, you will have a student who is giving some information on PE as a subject in the school. So each room that you click into, each room that you click into will have an icon in it. And so, for example, if you click into the geography room, click on the icon, you will get some background information in relation to the subject um, and the curriculum and why students enjoy doing the subject uh, in the school. So we hope and uh, we as i say we've made some improvements to 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 the virtual tour we hope it will be easy for for parents and pupils to to navigate but the important bit there is that the icon there on the left oh if you go directly into the rooms if you wish you can see there and again i'm in the bottom left there if you view the doll's house that allows you to get an overview of the school and to you know to walk around the corridors of winter classrooms and you're more than welcome obviously to do that as well okay so that's the the virtual tour and um, i'm just going to back out of this for a second and again there just underneath there's just some information there and um, again in relation to point in the right direction in relation to how to use the, the virtual tour okay so the next thing then i'm going to show you in relation to uh, the school website and, and look the message that you get here is that um, the website is the focal point really of, of everything that we do in the school um, and we we'll give, we'll give some more information on that in a minute but I'm also going to draw your attention to this is the home page again that I'm back on and I'm going to ask you to scroll down or show you how to scroll down to the bottom and if you look there there's an icon called curriculum and if you click on curriculum and you go into junior cycle okay you will see that the subjects that the school offers and um, are are presented there for for parents and pupils to look at so if i'm going to click here on this this is our compulsory exam subjects irish english maths history geography and science uh, modern language which is either french or, or spanish okay everybody does french and spanish is offered as an option you then have your compulsory non-exam subjects, which I'm hoping to open there. There we go. So your non-exam subjects are uh, RE, uh, Information Technology, Guidance, and SPHE, okay? Um, and with that, you have um, Physic PE and My Brain and Me, which are all part of our, our wellbeing program in the school. There's just a little note there to say that students who do not study English education uh, will be offered um, uh, ethics in its place, okay? We'll be offered ethics in its place. So um, you'll be asked, if you're offered a place in the school, you'll be asked before you join the school whether you wish for your child to, to, to pursue a religious education course in the school, and if not, um, then the student will be offered ethics in its place. You will see there also, look, that there's um, subject specifications for, for the different various subjects that we're offering in the school, and also, um, uh, you know information on the new junior cycle and i suppose finally and importantly you have our option subjects there um, uh, for junior cycle so again uh, your child picks two subjects um, that, that they, they do two option subjects when they start with us uh, in september 2022 and basically they're they're the choice of subjects that we have uh, as you see quite an extensive choice and they will do two of those subjects they'll be asked to pick four their four favorites and then we'll try to offer the the two um their two first choice subjects basically so we have the virtual tour we have the information on curriculum we are back to the home page again 
And very briefly, I'm going to mention about um, policies. So if you go to the about section there and scroll down, you'll see the school's mission statement, but you'll also see our policies there on um, internet accessible use policy or child protection policy, for example, um, or anti-bullying policy or code of behavior. So again, they're there for, for parents to access. And what you will see from having logged in to the website that you, you know, we provide regular updates um, to parents almost weekly. Um, so if we just click into last Friday's update, you'll see their information on, and I'm just going to go down through this very quickly, the Safe Routes to School program, which is basically looking at how um, students come to school, do they walk, the cycle, do they get lifts? And also it looks at accessing our car park safely and making sure the students are safe and staff coming into school in the morning. We were awarded the green flag um, uh, last week and we had a ceremony for that um, in, in the school grounds and that's mentioned. And then we had a, a, a wellbeing workshop for our six year students, very successful and very well received. And that's also mentioned. Um, and then you have our forward program, which we spoke about. Um, and we have there our October assessments information on our fire drill. So what you're seeing there is that the, as I said earlier, the website is the focal point for, for parents and for pupils. And it's where, you know, you see the information and, um, you know, you get a very, very good understanding and I suppose in-depth uh, look at what's going on in the school, you know, on a weekly basis. And the website captures that um, extremely well. So the last part of the presentation this evening is to, and a, and a very important part is to, sorry there, just go back into that, is to look at our uh, process in relation to admissions. So again, website again, this is all on the homepage of the website. Uh, you see there our admissions notice, okay? And I'm just gonna click into this. So, our admissions notice, there are three links there on the website. And what the admissions notice does is it gives you the information in relation to the number of applicants, I suppose, first of all, the number of places that the school um, offered last year. Um, we intended to offer 180 places. Um, it gives you the number of applications that we had. Uh, it also gave details about dates and um, uh, in relation to closing dates and everything else, okay? So, so basically the information, uh, I'm just gonna, sorry, not take over this for a second, and I'm going to go into the summary of the policy. So what we're gonna show you here is the, the full enrollment policy, school enrollment policy is, is quite extensive. It's about 60 pages in length, if, if I recall correctly. So what we've provided for parents is a summary of, I suppose, the key information in relation to the enrollment process. So what you'll see there is, um, first of all, the criteria for, 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 for selection of students. Now this is only in a situation where the school is oversubscribed, which we have been for the last number of years. Um, and basically the first criteria is there, you can see brothers and sisters of students who are attending the school. And um, the second one is students whose parents attended the school but the student must be in one of our feeder primary schools, okay? Must be one of our feeder primary schools. Then we have um, children of staff members. Um, and then category four there is a child who's the eldest in the family and has attended one of our feeder primary schools, of which there are 10, and I'll get to that in a second. And then finally, you have students who are not the eldest in the family and attend one of the primary schools uh, listed. And then six is all other applicants. So the feeder primary schools are listed there. There are 10, as I mentioned, 10 feeder primary schools. Now look, in any given year, we could receive you know, applications from over 25 um, different primary schools and obviously priority is given to, to our 10 feeder schools. But you know, most years we are able to welcome kids from, you know, as I say, well over 20 primary schools. Key dates. Okay, so the admissions notice went up on the website on the 27th of September. The application process opened the online application on the 4th of October. That will close on Friday, the 22nd of October. Um, and I suppose I want to, to highlight to you 
that it's absolutely essential that the application is in um, on time because if your application is late, if it's after the Friday the 22nd October closing date, uh, even if you are, for example, a category one, I'm scrolling back up there, a category one applicant, in other words, you have a brother or sister in the school, if you are a category one applicant and your application is late, then you go to the bottom of the um, um, list of ap applicants into the school. Okay, so it's absolutely essential that you have your application in on time. Um, then we have a board of management meeting on the 8th of November. And at that, um, at that board of management meeting, the board decide on the number of students that we're going to enroll in September 2022. So generally we try to enroll 180 students at six full classes in, in, in first year. For the last couple of years, um, three years, I think, we, we, the board has made the decision to, um, to have seven first year classes. And um, you now, obviously, you know, if you look at the admissions notice, uh, we said and again that it is our intention to enroll 180 students, six classes. Ultimately, excuse me, that is the decision of the board on the 8th of November, excuse me. So then after that meeting on the 8th of November, and once the decision is made on the number of students that we're going to enroll, then Friday the 19th of November, basically you will be written to um, and either you, you know, you'll be either successful in being offered a place or you know, you'll be refused admission um, based on the grounds of, of oversubscription. And anybody who was offered a place um, has then another two weeks until Friday the 3rd of December to accept that place. Um, and if not, then it goes to uh, another student on, on the waiting list. So listen, there, there are key dates there in relation to the process, but I suppose the immediate one, and, and to be fair, you know, lots of people have their applications in already, but the key one there is Friday the 22nd of October, the application must come in on time, and um, must come in on time, uh, otherwise, you know, you go, as I say, to the bottom of the list of applicants. So I'm just watching our time there, um, and and uh, we're conscious that we've given a lot of information to you to this, this evening. Um, I suppose the message is, uh, you know, contact us at any stage if you have any questions in relation to uh, our processes and our, our procedures in the school. Um, you know, a questions in relation to the enrollment process or anything like that. Please feel free to contact us, and and we'd be delighted to to, to give you the information you need. I suppose the other key message before we finish is to say to you, you know, um, as I say, it's you know, it's a it's a thriving school. It's a it's a it's a lovely school. We're very proud of our students. And um, I suppose our goal is to maximise the performance of of each individual student. Um, sorry, at their sorry at their own particular level. And what we try to do is develop, I suppose, independent. And I'm just going to stop sharing there. Sorry independent and motivated learners and ultimately what we're trying to do is develop well-rounded well-rounded individuals so we're trying to i suppose support the individual ability and the talent of each of our students in the school and i suppose my final message to you is that you know we're very very proud of all our students in the school and um, you know they're they, they really represent the school with 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 such um I suppose with such quality is the word I would use and we hope I suppose that you know we will be able to welcome your child to, to our school in the future and I suppose to impact on them in the way that you know we feel we've done for all the kids who come through the school um, over the last number of years. So we'd like to thank you very much for, for making the effort to join us this evening for logging on and uh, as I say we look forward to, to you know um, dealing with any questions or queries that you might have and we hope as I say to welcome your child to our school in the not too distant future so thank you very much for joining us tonight and good night